Welcome to TransLogic, I'm Bradley Hasemeyer. Now you've probably heard of BMW's Mini E program, and you've undoubtedly heard of Tesla. But you've probably never heard of AC Propulsion. They're the company that make those cars go. So today, we're introducing you to the biggest behind the scenes player in the electrification of the automobile. All right, so I'm in an E-Box, which is essentially a retrofitted 2005 Scion XB. I'm here with Tom Gage, the CEO of AC Propulsion. Tom, thanks for being with us. Good to be here. Thanks for going for a ride. Tell me a little bit about your company. We got started back in 1992. Alan Cocconi was the founder. He had been working on a number of projects relating to electric propulsion, most notably the GM Impact, which was a concept car shown in 1990 at the LA Auto Show. That's what led to the EV1, right? It did. It, it led directly to the EV1. They were essentially the same car in concept. We had an advantage over the car companies in that we were a group of engineers who were just dedicated to commercializing electric vehicles. And we started on a project which came to be called T0, eventually got to 4.1 seconds, 0 to 60. This is with lead acid batteries. Okay. It had 85 miles of range, never lost a race. But one of those guys whose perceptions had changed was Martin Eberhardt. He started hanging around, helped us to convert the T0 to the latest in battery technology. Lithium ion. Took out 1,200 pounds of lead acid batteries and put in 500 pounds of wow. lithium ion batteries. Took the 0 to 60 from 4.1 down to 3.6, which is really unheard of in those yeah. days. Well, even now, 3.6 is still, still supercar uh, yeah. pedigree. Martin said, lend me the T0, I'm going to start my own company. The rest is history, actually. Tesla Motors bought a license from us for our technology. 2008, they launched the Roadster. 2010, they went that public. And, yeah. Uh, we'll see where it goes from here. Some of the technology you guys developed actually caught the attention of BMW. Well, that was a great program. Uh, they became aware of the e-box. One thing led to another. We started talking about it. I said, well, you know, we could build an electric version of the Mini. The prototype might be half a million bucks. He said, oh, we don't have that kind of budget. Next thing I know, there's there's six or seven engineers flying in from Munich, and they're taking the e-box out for extensive testing, and uh, they come up with this program to build 500 electric minis. Wow. So we signed a contract in January of 2008, and we had 500 cars on the ground in California in December of 2008. So you guys went from essentially building four or five of these different e-boxes and prototypes and that kind of thing to then having to build 500? That's right. We built the drive systems, we built the batteries, we worked together on the integration, and we, we ramped up. We have a factory in Shanghai. We ramped up that factory from basically doing one or two a month to 60 a week. It's, and it's creating a huge image benefit for BMW because they've really leapfrogged all these other companies that are that are just getting started with their programs. Yeah, it's like, where did that come from, right? You're like yeah, all of a sudden, exactly. BMW's like, and, oh yeah, we got 500, and they're all across the world. Yeah, and that was their strategy. They realized that they really had nothing going in electrical propulsion. They didn't yeah. have a hybrid program. They didn't have a fuel cell car program. They didn't know what was going on with electric propulsion. Yeah, um, they changed that right away by coming to us. So obviously you guys have developed a bunch of really great technology. What are some of the things that you guys have created? Well, the fundamental thing is the drive system, which was Alan's conception, which is you know, an AC induction motor at high power, one that has, operates at high speed, and another critical feature is the onboard charger. Okay. And so this means the charger always travels with the car, and all you have to do is plug the charger into a, an AC outlet. All the modern cars have an onboard charger, okay. but, but for the most part, they're very small, which means it takes a long time to charge. We can have a very high power charger with no penalty in size, cost, or weight. So there isn't a separate charger, the drive system is the charger. So for $300, we can have an 18 kilowatt charger. Wow. And, uh, that gives you, you know, the ability to charge really fast. Now, another really key feature with some of the stuff you guys are doing is V2G, vehicle to grid. The idea that you'll have thousands and tens of thousands and eventually millions of EVs, each with a battery and each with a power system, means that when those vehicles are plugged in, they, in mass, represent a giant battery a on the grid. Battery. Like transformers all coming together. Yeah, I'm going to draw power from the grid or I'm going to send power from the vehicle to the grid. Mm. And that's where vehicle to grid comes in. 
we're talking really small amounts of energy that would leave your car to go back to the grid, correct? That's right. And the cool part, you get paid a fixed amount simply for being available and standing by. Oh, interesting. You can effectively pay for your electricity and your battery wear out costs. What's the future of the company? What's the role that you guys well, see? Well, our, our mission remains as it always has been, which is the commercialization of electric transportation. Nissan has just created the interest from all the other car companies that we're now exploiting and trying to get into business yeah. with. And I think certainly that was an element in BMW's recognition that they better get started. And the thing with technology, too, is that you guys have to, have to start developing it. You guys have to be pushing that technological envelope as well. We do. We're trying to get the market to develop along the lines that we think makes the most sense for the customer. It's a challenge because the EV has kind of evolved from a regulatory push as much as a demand pull. You've yeah. got to get it out there and it's got to be something that they're going to end up wanting to buy. But that's where we've come in with performance, efficiency in both driving and charging. So, does AC Propulsion want to build and sell EVs? Not really. But the collaboration with OEMs is pushing the commercialization of the electric car. And maybe in five to ten years, you might have an EV in your driveway, and you'll have them to thank. All right, for TransLogic, I'm Bradley Hasmar. See you next week.